Greetings. Welcome to the Guidewire Third Quarter Fiscal 2021 Financial Results Conference Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. A question and answer session will follow the formal presentation. If anyone should require operator assistance during the conference, please press star zero on your telephone keypad. Please note this conference is being recorded. I will now turn the conference over to your host, Alex Hughes. You may begin. Thank you, operator. Good afternoon and welcome to Guidewire Software's earnings conference call for the third quarter of fiscal year 2021, which ended on April 30th. My name is Alex Hughes. I am Vice President of Investor Relations. and With me on the call today is Mike Rosenbaum, Guidewire's Chief Executive Officer, and Jeff Cooper, Guidewire's Chief Financial Officer. A complete disclosure of our results can be found in our press release issued today, as well as in our related form 8K furnished to the SEC, both of which are available on the Investor Relations section of our website. Today's call is being recorded and a replay will be available following the conclusion of this call. Statements made on this call include forward-looking statements regarding our financial results, products, customer demand, operations, the impact of COVID-19 on our business, and other matters. These statements are subject to risks, uncertainties, and assumptions and are based on management's current expectations as of today and should not be relied upon as representing our views at any subsequent date. Please refer to the press release and risk factors and documents we file with the SEC including our most recent annual report on Form 10-K and our quarterly report on Form 10-Q to be filed with the SEC. For information on risks, uncertainties, and the assumptions that may cause actual results to differ materially from those set forth in such statements. We also will refer to certain non-GAAP financial measures to provide additional information to investors. A reconciliation of non-GAAP to GAAP measures is provided in our press release. Reconciliations and additional data are also posted in the supplement on our IR website. And with that, I'll now turn the call over to Mike. Thank you, Alex. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. I'm pleased to say that we had a great third quarter with both ARR and subscription revenue coming in ahead of guidance. We continue to build on our cloud momentum with key cloud wins, migrations, notable cloud deployments, and the third release of our cloud platform, Cortina. Cortina is the latest in our twice yearly release cycle for the Guidewire Cloud Platform and includes numerous advances and innovations that bolster our position as the leading cloud solution for PNC insurers. On today's call, I'll provide more color on each of these areas and talk about how and why our performance in the quarter gives us increasing confidence in our cloud transformation. Then I'll turn it over to Jeff to discuss our financial results and outlook. Starting with sales activity, we closed eight cloud deals in Q3, five for Insurance Week Cloud, and three for Insurance Now. We continue to see very healthy year-over-year -year growth in deal count, and year-to-date we've had 11 Insurance Week Cloud deals up nearly 2x compared to the same period last year. Sales activity in the quarter showed strength across Americas and Asia-Pacific regions and included the following highlights. FCCI Insurance Group, a middle market commercial property and casualty insurer, headquartered in Sarasota, Florida, and writing in 20 states plus Washington, D.C., decided to upgrade Claim Center to the Guidewire Cloud platform and replace their existing billing system with Billing Center Cloud. This will allow FCCI to simplify its IT environment and benefit from the continuous upgrades and innovation cycle provided by Guidewire Cloud. An existing Claim Center and Billing Center customer specializing in commercial trucking and auto insurance chose Policy Center on Guidewire Cloud in a first step towards adopting Guidewire Cloud more broadly. Key factors that impacted their decision were a need to increase their speed to market with new insurance products, seamless integration with Claim Center and Billing Center, and lower overall total cost of ownership. RLI Insurance Company, a tier two specialty insurer headquartered in Illinois, was in the middle of a Claim Center version 10 upgrade when they decided to accelerate straight to Guidewire Cloud. This will allow them to stay current with the Claim Center roadmap to improve automation and dynamic claims processing while aligning with their cloud-first strategy to improve speed to market. This is a great example of how our effort to streamline cloud upgrades accelerates customer adoption. AOE Nisei Dawa Insurance New Zealand, a subsidiary of MS and AD in Japan that provides motor insurance through the Toyota dealer network in New Zealand, selected Insurance Suite Cloud after an extensive competitive review. Key differentiators included our product breadth, our proven ability to scale, and our cloud innovation roadmap. This is a first great win at AOE, 
which will allow us to demonstrate our cloud platform to the larger MS and AD group. Earthquake Commission, or EQC, a New Zealand crown entity that conducts natural disaster research, education, and provides insurance to residential property owners, elected to migrate Claim Center Cloud from V8 for our cloud's compelling financial case, improved configuration tools, and strong innovation roadmap. This is a guidewire-led migration that utilized our Cloud Direct framework. We also continue to gain momentum with Insurance Now, which is our all-in-one core offering targeted at smaller insurers in North America and where we tend to see the broadest competition. An MGA headquartered in Nashville selected Insurance Now for its product versatility and for the maturity of Guidewire. This will be a Cognizant-led implementation which demonstrates early momentum with partner-led implementations of Insurance Now. After an extensive review, we also saw insurance now selected by Lidditz Mutual Insurance Company, a provider of homeowners and business insurance through a network of independent agents. Additionally, a longtime Tier 1 customer chose to invest in another instance of insurance now to support an additional business unit for its versatility, rich feature set, and ability to scale. This customer leverages both insurance suite and insurance now as they have many different business units who each have different core solution needs. And finally, in a great example of how insurance now can scale as our customers grow, we significantly expanded our partnership with Andover Companies, a tier three insurer who has been an insurance now customer since 2017. We also continue to see healthy activity and strong demand for data and analytics with six deals in the quarter. Our science business continues to grow as insurers are seeing growing demand from policyholders looking to safeguard against the threat of increasing frequency and severity of cyber risk around the globe. Notable wins in the quarter for science include Donegal Insurance Group, Ascot U.S. Services, and eCentaur. eCentaur, a global leader in managed detection and response, represents an exciting use case for science outside of insurance. In addition, we also had a great digital win in the quarter at Automobile Club of Southern California. The AAA affiliate carrier, an existing insurance suite customer, wanted to improve their digital presence and our UTRO framework enabled their team to create compelling digital journeys faster and cheaper than with their existing alternative. While this was not a cloud deployment, I want to point out that the architecture of the digital solution and how it aligns to our cloud platform was a key factor in the decision and points to an intention to eventually move to our cloud platform. Turning to customer success, 12 customers went live on implementations for 30 Guidewire products globally, and we were particularly pleased to see two initial go-lives on the Guidewire cloud platform. Aviva Italy, a leading tier one insurer, successfully deployed insurance suite on Guidewire cloud platform in less than nine months and experienced immediate cost reduction in application maintenance operations. The Hartford, a leader in property and casualty insurance, was able to deploy Insurance Suite Cloud for the Putty Insurance brand and achieve full end-to-end -end functionality in less than six months. Putty provides a direct-to-consumer quote and buy experience for contractors and handymen, allowing the purchase of usage-based insurance for as little as a few hours of coverage. In the quarter, we also saw Insurance Australia Group, Australia's largest insurer, go live on Policy Center, Billing Center, and Digital. This was a large transformational project, four years in the making, and included partners PwC, Tenzing, and Cognizant. For large transformations like this, an insurer will often focus on modernizing their core systems first before moving to the cloud. We're excited about this go, li go live and look forward to continuing to support IAG on its journey. With that, let me turn to discussing Cortina, our most recent Guidewire Cloud release, which I'm very excited about and we are all very proud of. Cortina represents a significant step forward in advancing our cloud strategy and is a major expansion of the innovation, efficiency, and ease of integration for customers. It demonstrates the advantage of combining Guidewire's depth and breadth with the speed, ease, and efficiency of the cloud and the large amplifying ecosystem of solution partners who can more easily plug in through open APIs and standardization. I'm especially happy about Cortina because the key enhancements contained in it exemplify how the platform has evolved and will continue to evolve, how the pieces work together and build on each other, and how now, after three releases, it's more and more apparent how powerful this innovation machine will become for our customers. 
Cortina included three important examples of innovation that I want to highlight. First, we introduced a new integration gateway as a native part of Guidewire's platform. The integration gateway orchestrates API calls to and from insurance suite and third-party applications and greatly simplifies the approach customers take to integrating Guidewire to other systems. This simplifies process automation and enables insurers to create their own differentiating workflows based on an ecosystem of connected apps and services. It's a great example of the type of thing that is repeated over and over and over again with every single implementation of Guidewire around the world. By centralizing and standardizing the approach to integration with insurance suite, we can make this important part of every implementation faster and cheaper and more reliable. Second is Data Studio, a new data management tool built on top of our Guidewire data platform that enables customers to access, create, and publish business-ready data sets whenever they are needed. Now, every single Guidewire Cloud Platform customer automatically has out-of-the-box access to a data lake populated with the event-driven data streamed from Insurance Suite and paired with Data Studio. This enables customers to quickly and easily define and publish these data sets to be used for any reporting and analytics requirements they have. Again, this foundational platform capability reduces the costs associated with initial implementations and makes ongoing innovation on the platform much faster and more effective. Finally, we have now made it possible to run insurance now on the Guidewire Cloud Platform, which will extend many of the Guidewire Cloud Platform benefits like scalability, monitoring, and easier integration to our insurance now customers. And this will also drive greater efficiency for Guidewire. It's a critical first step in extending the innovation and benefits from Insurance Suite and Guidewire Cloud to our insurance now customers. Switching gears to our SI ecosystem and marketplace, we continue to see tremendous enthusiasm and excitement across Guidewire's global partner community. We ended the quarter with more than 1,600 consultants from 31 partner companies who have now earned the advanced certifications required for Guidewire Insurance Suite cloud implementations. And this is up 36% from the end of last quarter and continues to demonstrate the strong demand for partner implementation services and Guidewire cloud. Additionally, Cognizant and Deloitte qualified for the cloud specialization within our Partner Connect program, joining PwC, EY, and Capgemini as key systems integrators who have earned this designation. This growth in certified consultants and partner specializations is proof of the opportunity our SI partners see in the future of Guidewire Cloud. We also saw continued momentum with our marketplace partners. There are now over 700 applications from Guidewire and 120 partners, and we added a record number of partners and, and partner applications in the quarter. As we continue to grow this marketplace, we deliver more and more value for customers by enabling InsurTechs to innovate on top of and in conjunction with our platform. As I mentioned just a minute ago, Cortina delivers a very significant new integration capability that I expect will unlock innovation and accelerate the development of simple, repeatable plug-and-play integrations on our marketplace. Finally, Cortina also includes Guidewire usage-based insurance, which is a packaged set of products and services built on the Guidewire platform and integrated with key capabilities from our partner ecosystem, such as TrueMotion and Cambridge Mobile Telematics. It's the industry's first end-to-end usage-based insurance solution supporting the entire life cycle from quote to claim. In summary, we continue to execute well across the key elements of our strategy, including cloud deals, go lives, and our partner ecosystem, and our Guidewire cloud roadmap. Customer interest and engagement continues to grow, and activity levels are high as we close out our fiscal year. We feel good about our cloud pipeline and long-term position in the market, and I continue to be very confident in the connection between our successful short-term execution and the long-term outcome we're driving towards in 2022 and beyond. I'll now turn the call over to Jeff to discuss the financial results in more detail. Thanks, Mike. We were very pleased with our results in the quarter, exceeding our outlook across the board. Third quarter ARR ended at $538 million, up 11% year over year. We saw continued insurance suite cloud momentum combined with strong contributions from analytics and insurance now. Total revenue was $164 million, ahead of our outlook primarily due to strong subscription revenue. Subscription revenue was $44.6 million, up 48% year over year. 
Subscription revenue benefited from higher than expected variable revenue from Science and Insurance Now customers and strong third quarter revenue conversion from cloud deals sold in Q2 due to faster software provisioning. As a reminder, we start recognizing subscription revenue for our cloud arrangements upon provisioning of the software. Other components of total revenue finished largely in line with our outlook. Term license revenue was 50.9 million, which is 12 million lower than Q3 last year due to 12.8 million of deal duration impacts last year that did not recur this year, and more generally due to the fact that almost 90% of our bookings in Q3 came from our cloud products. Turning to profitability for the quarter, which we will discuss on a non-GAAP basis, gross profit was 81.6 million. Overall gross margin was 50% compared to 56% a year ago. Subscription and support gross margin was 42% and benefited from revenue outperformance that I just discussed. Services gross margin was 10% compared to 12% a year ago. Operating loss was 16.3 million, better than our guidance range due to higher than expected total revenue and lower than expected expenses due to the timing of hiring. We ended the quarter with 1.3 billion in cash, cash equivalents and investments. During the quarter, we invested $80 million on the repurchase of 765,000 shares with $77.4 million remaining in our share repurchase authorization. Turning to our outlook, I will discuss the full year outlook and then I will discuss some of the preliminary, some preliminary expectations for fiscal 2022. For the full year, we now expect ARR to be between 562 and 569 million. Our fourth quarter is always a very active period for Guidewire, and this year is no different. We have a large number of cloud evaluations ongoing at the moment. This includes a healthy mix of cloud migrations, existing customers looking to bring new systems to the cloud, and new customer engagements. Sales activities with existing customers contemplating a migration are focused on the timing of an eventual upgrade. However, the timing of the final resolution of these engagements is always hard to predict, and our outlook reflects our best view into where we believe we will finish the year. As we look ahead to next fiscal year, we continue to feel confident in demand as customer upgrade schedules firm up. As a reminder, we measure ARR as a, on a constant currency basis and revalue ARR at the end of each fiscal year. If FX rates remain unchanged from the end of Q3, we would expect some benefit to our ARR numbers, but this benefit is not reflected in our outlook. We are increasing our total outlook, our, we are increasing our outlook for total revenue which we now expect to be between 732 and 738 million. This reflects increased strength in subscription revenue and services revenue. We are increasing our guidance for subscription revenue to approximately 167 million. There is no change in our term license revenue expectations, and there is just over 3 million in longer than normal deal duration embedded into our term license outlook in Q4. We are also increasing our services revenue outlook to 185 million as a result of delivery schedules firming up in Q4. We still expect total gross margins for the year to be approximately 55% with subscription and support margins at around 43%. Services gross margins for the fiscal year are still expected to finish in the low single digits. We are raising our outlook for operating income to between 14 million and 20 million due to an increase in the midpoint of our total revenue outlook and due to expense favorability from the timing of hiring. Our outlook for cash flow from operations remains unchanged for the year. Finally, I wanted to provide some high level commentary on our expectations for fiscal 2022. As we look ahead to next year, we are confident ARR growth and subscription revenue growth will both accelerate. In addition, subscription gross margins will also start to demonstrate expansion. These are foundational building blocks of our long-term model that we discussed at Analyst Day last October. 
we expect ARR growth of 12 to 14 percent from the midpoint of our, of our fiscal 2021 ARR outlook in fiscal 2022. We expect subscription revenue growth of 42 to 48 percent from our fiscal 2021 expectation, expectations. License revenue is expected to decline due to cloud, make, cloud migration activity and less new term license sales as most of our bookings now come from cloud. Services revenue is expected to grow in the low single digits. As a result of all of these factors, we expect total revenue growth in fiscal 2022 of between three and 5%. As noted in the past, we expect subscription gross margins for fiscal 2022 to be higher than fiscal 2021 as we gain leverage from accelerating subscription revenue and begin achieving efficiencies. Overall, subscription and support gross margins are expected to be relatively flat as the overall mix of subscription and support revenue shifts towards subscription revenue and away from higher margin support revenue. This preliminary view is consistent with the long-term outlook we discussed at Analyst Day in October, and we hope that you find it constructive as you begin to think about your fiscal 2022 models. Operator, we can now open the call for questions. Thank you. At this time, we will be conducting a question and answer session. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. A confirmation tone will indicate your line is in the question queue. You may press star 2 if you would like to remove your question from the queue. For participants using speaker equipment, it may be necessary to pick up your handset before pressing the star keys. Our first question is from Chris Merwin with Goldman Sachs. Please proceed with your question. Okay, thanks very much uh, for taking my question. Um, I just wanted to ask about the cloud deals in the quarter. I think there were eight of them, uh, obviously a very big number. Can you talk a bit about how many of those were Guidewire cloud platform deals? And then just at a higher level, how do you think about, you know, trying to push more customers to, to do Guidewire cloud platform deals as opposed to, you know, lifting and shifting, say, an existing um, deployment of Guidewire to the cloud that's not on cloud, cloud platform? So just trying to think, you know, trying to understand how you're, you know, guiding customers in that direction to the extent that you're able to. Thanks. Yeah, Chris, thanks for the question. Um, yeah, let me let me be uh, clear about this. So going forward, all of the insurance suite cloud deals will be on Guidewire cloud platform. Uh, we are, we worked with, uh, you know, some of the early uh, Guidewire cloud customers on migration to Guidewire cloud. But going forward, everybody that's buying cloud and, you know, specifically insurance suite will be going direct to Guidewire cloud platform. On the insurance now side, I think that will it'll take us uh, a bit of time. As I've called out, we had we had this one important milestone this quarter of getting one of the insurance now customers onto that Guidewire uh, cloud platform infrastructure, and that's an important milestone for us. Uh, but you know we'll see how we progress the rest of the insurance now customer base and net new customers for insurance now. But the way to think about it is that. Um, going forward, every insurance suite cloud customer will be going to Guidewire Cloud Platform. Does that make sense? Yep, that, that's perfect. Thanks, Mike. And just had a follow-up for um, Jeff on the initial look into next year for the 12 to 14 percent ARR growth. Can you talk a bit about what you're seeing in the pipeline today that gives you confidence in that acceleration and, and how much of that acceleration is being driven by your expectation for, for more deals or larger deals? versus the impact of ramp pricing starting to come through and, and getting captured in, in, in a standard ARR definition. Thanks. Yeah, so, so a lot of that acceleration is the model starting to take effect, and we're starting to see the impacts of the model that we put in place a number of years ago. And so starting to see the impacts of these ramped deals that flow into the number in a more meaningful way and as we layer on cloud customer cohorts, that becomes a more powerful artifact of our model. Um, we're also, you know, this is, we're also seeing, you know, good buying signs from existing customers that are contemplating an eventual move. I noted on the call that you know, predicting the timing of getting that to final resolution can be difficult, but all the patterns we're seeing with some, you know, exciting existing customers seriously contemplating that move uh, it flows into how we think about our expectations for next year. And then in general as well, we're starting to see, you know, for a while it's been a little bit of a soft 
market for insurers wanting to modernize new systems as they wait for the maturity of the cloud platforms to reach a certain level. And we're starting to see some good momentum on that part of the market as well, as well which, is, which is exciting for us. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Our next question comes from Sterling Audi with J.P. Morgan. Please proceed with your question. Hi, this is Maya on Switch Sterling. Um, just sticking with the cloud deals in a quarter, how many of those came from existing customers and were there any tier one deals uh, in those eight? Yeah, thanks for the question. Let me, uh, let me make sure I get this correct for you. Uh, there were no tier ones in that group. Um, and uh, let me um, I apologize. I'm, I'm looking at the, the numbers here to get you the percentage. My rough is, uh, you know, 50% uh, roughly, and uh, the team will add it up here for you in a second. Um, yeah, I think it's in line uh, with what we typically see in the pipeline uh, between upgrades of existing customers and, and net new deals that, that we're able to close. Uh, but in the quarter, we didn't have uh, a Tier 1. Um, we did have the Tier 2, as I called out, RLI Insurance Company. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Ken Wan with Guggenheim Securities. Please proceed with your question. Great. Uh, uh, this first question, just building on what Chris was asking, Jeff, on, on the 12 to 14 percent guide next year, I guess how should we think about uh, the trajectory towards the, the 17 to 19 percent CAGR? So it does feel like, you know, last year or this year is going to be the trough. Uh, should it be fairly linear in, uh, in, that, in, in terms of getting to that longer-term target? Yeah, Ken, I think, I think it's pretty consistent with how we talked about it at Analyst Day. Um, you know, we're very pleased to see some acceleration as we move into next year. Uh, that's consistent with how we set the expectation at Analyst Day that it would probably take a couple of years for us to get back into that mid-teens level, and then, you know, hopefully we can continue to see acceleration beyond that. But, but that's how I would think about it. You know, we're not – we thought about this as, as a two-year journey, getting back into kind of the mid-teens, and that's still very much uh, how we're thinking about it. Got it, got it. Great. Thanks for the clarity. And then, Mike, this is sort of a broader industry question. I, I think, that, you know, this, the past week we saw Lemonade get some negative blowback for AI-powered claims commentary that they made. I think one of the more compelling value-add automations that we've seen from Guidewire Cloud is autopilot, and obviously you guys have talked about the value of data insights uh, that's powered by the cloud. Any, re any initial thoughts or read-throughs for, for Guidewire and other PNC platform providers, you know, with, uh, with this whole, you know, with, with, with AI and, you know, potential concerns there? Yeah, I appreciate the question. I think it's a very, very good one. I think, um, you know, the way we think about this is that uh, trust as a very, very important word as it relates to uh, a cloud platform provider like Guidewire or an insurance company. Uh, and establishing trust with your, with your customers about how you do things and how the systems work uh, is critically important to any company, uh, maybe not just in our industries, but in the world. Um, and, you know, the degree of you know, sort of social commentary and discussion about the way the, com the, the way different companies operate is just becoming more and more important every day. Um, and I think the, the, way I, the way we look at it at Guidewire is that machine learning techniques are going to enable uh, insurance companies to become significantly more efficient. They're going to enable companies to price risks more effectively. And all of that benefit eventually flows back to consumers and businesses. A better run insurance industry that I uh, work very hard every single day to make possible, the net result of that is a benefit to consumers and companies. But it's important that everybody understands how these systems work, how they're being used, and, uh, you know, and that we're very careful and open about the approaches that we're taking 
Um, autopilot uh, is a small first step in that direction, and I hope that we're able to achieve very, very significant results in our customer base with it. But it'll always be done in an open way, uh, in sort of partnership with our customers and in partnership with our customers' customers so that people can understand how these systems work and build the trust necessary to enable us to achieve, you know, that output. So I really do appreciate the question, and, and it's something we do think about quite a lot. Fantastic insights. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thank you. Our next question comes from Matt Van Vliet with BTIG. Please proceed with your question. Yeah, thanks, guys, for taking the question. Um, I guess, Mike, you highlighted Marketplace uh, as a big opportunity and, and something that, you know, a lot of the developments on Cortina are, are really enabling. Maybe just help us think about uh, over the longer term, you know, how, how do you monetize that uh, most effectively? You know, how much can that sort of contribute to um, the actual, you know, reported results and financial model versus, um, you know, just being another key element and feature for um, your underlying customers to, to enable their kind of future proofing of their business? I would, I would say, yeah, thanks for the question. I would say primarily I'm thinking about this much, much more as a differentiating feature of the platform and of the product, something that augments the value of what Guidewire is able to deliver. Um, certainly there are, uh, there's potential uh, to monetize marketplaces and many of the leading uh, platform providers have been very successful in endeavors such as that. Um, but right now, I'm mu and we are much, much more focused on uh, growing that ecosystem, enhancing the capabilities of the platform such that that um, ecosystem can just flourish, um, you know, because I, I honestly just think we're getting started there. Um, and, it's, and for one really important reason, right, is that Guidewire Cloud represents a stable and consistent surface area to partners in a way that the current Guidewire customer base does not, because the current Guidewire customer base is spread across a variety of different versions and, and you know, sort of behind firewall implemented on-prem or implemented in uh, public clouds, but, on, you know, with each, with each customer. But in a Guidewire cloud environment with the integration framework that we described as part of Cortina, you get a stable surface area, and I just think that's going to cause the marketplace to flourish. It's going, to, it's going to reduce the expense it's going to redu uh, of building these solutions. It's going to reduce the expense of implementing these solutions, and I really want to see that flourish, um, and, and that's how I'm thinking about it as a differentiating feature of the platform. You know, certainly there's monetization potential, um, but I don't want to uh, start predicting that uh, prematurely uh, because I think at this point in our evolution, it's much more important for us to instantiate that marketplace uh, and really invest in growing it uh, so that everybody can benefit from it, from its existence, if that, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's, that's great. And, and Jeff, maybe um, just on the initial thoughts, especially around gross margin for next year, um, you know, what are, I guess, what could be the headwinds to seeing uh, overall, uh, I guess, gross margin expansion across uh, the subs line? Um, you know, if, if you have another very strong, a uh, quarter or two of, of booking new cloud deals. Does that, uh, you know, does that compress the near-term gross margin potentially as as they ramp up, um, or are we through most of that um, kind of layering in of new deals causing compression uh, and, and sort of new business on top of it is just leverage from here? Yeah, so we, we've completed a lot of the hiring and the building out of the cloud operations team. That's been a big emphasis for us for a couple of years. You know, there's been a lot of hiring this year, so the full year effect next year will still have an impact on margins. But, you know, we, as we noted in the prepared remarks, we do expect to see margin expansion on the subscription line next year and in, a, in a way that is, is, is fairly material. Now, when you look at subscription and support, because support um, is relatively high margin today, and as the mix shift increases on the subscription side versus vis-a-vis -vis the support side, the overall subscription and support margins will remain relatively constant is the outlook that we provided uh, on the call. 
but um, but we are expecting to see a significant expansion on the subscription margin line. Okay, great. Thank you for taking my question. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Mayank Tandon with Needham. Please proceed with your question. Hey, good afternoon, guys. This is actually uh, Kyle Peterson um, for uh, Mayank. I uh, wanted to touch um, a little bit on the initial kind of 2022 thoughts uh, for licensed sales. Uh, have you guys, are there any assumptions for existing kind of licensed customers transitioning to cloud or, or, or their longer term impacts from like longer term deals that were signed in FY21 um, that won't recur? Just want to see how we should um, think about the puts and takes of license revenue next year. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And, and that, that's part of the reason why we wanted to get some of that outlook out there is I know this can be hard to model on the license revenue side. There, you mentioned two of the big factors that are that are impacting license revenue next year. One is, is we are seeing healthy migration activity. When a customer enacts a migration deal with Guidewire, there will be a license event in the year that that deal is signed. But then going forward, there there won't be any future license revenue associated with that customer as we transition them to subscription. So. There is cannibalization of our license revenue that will take place from our subscription revenue line. So that is happening and that's, that's showing up in the model. Uh, and then, you know, as term license bookings become a smaller and smaller piece of the overall new bookings, and because term licenses are typically two year dura in duration, the year after there's no recurring event uh, on the term license side. And so we're seeing that impact the model. But those are the two things that, that you highlighted. And those are the two primary factors that are causing year over year declines for license revenue. Okay, great. That's helpful. Um, and then I guess switching over to kind of the services um, line, I know it's, it's been declining for a couple of years and you guys are saying kind of low single digit growth next year. Do you guys think you've kind of right sized where you want your services business to be moving forward um, where maybe it's like a, a low single digit growing business. And then um, a lot of the rest of the growth is um, kind of done through like some of your SI partners. Um, just want to kind of get a feel for the, what the right mix yeah. of services is for you guys. Yeah. We, you know, we've been pushing a lot of that business to our partners, which is absolutely part of our long-term strategy. Um, you know, we're very excited about the momentum we see with all of our partners uh, that gives us more scale um, that we know we're going to need as we start to migrate this industry in a meaningful way. Uh, so we, we, we do think we've kind of got that organization at the right level um, where we can grow it in, in a, in a relatively muted fashion, but continue to, to grow that a bit. And then, you know, at this point in time, we are keeping our services margins a little bit lower than, than what we've seen, obviously lower than what we've seen historically as, um, as, as we're investing alongside of our customers to help with some of these migrations. And over time, we expect that to move up a little bit, but probably won't see that next year. Great. Uh, that's good color. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Our next question comes from Michael Turin with Wells Fargo Securities. Please proceed with your question. Hey there. Uh, thanks. Good afternoon. Um, certainly appreciate the initial outlook for fiscal 22. Um, always helpful. Jeff, can you maybe just remind us how much visibility you have in the next year at this point in time? The ARR guide um, throughout the course of this year has held fairly steady throughout the course of the year, which is actually pretty remarkable given the moving pieces um, that you're dealing with. So maybe just any commentary just around visibility as a starting point here is helpful. Yeah, I mean, I think ARR, there's, there are three factors that drive how we think about ARR. Um, there's new deals that we sell in a particular period and how they contribute to ARR. There is ARR that comes from previously sold ramped arrangements that, you know, flow into the number as long as we execute. And then there's, you know, our expectations for ARR attrition, which, you know, may be tied to a variety of, uh, of events that, that can cause some, some ARR attrition. As we look forward to next year, the number that is firming up and just continuing to provide more surety into how we think about the guide is, is we just have more visibility into what's coming from the base, right? So what's already embedded into ramped agree agreements. And as we layer on those cohorts of agreements, that helps with our visibility. 
Uh, that being said, we obviously need to go out and, and sell new business and continue to you know, win new customers and, and migrate our existing base. So um, those two factors are important. And then just a quick comment on ARR attrition. The, the last couple of years, we've seen a, a little bit of elevated ARR attrition. Uh, as we look forward to next year, we are expecting to see some improvement on that line um, that is, is factoring into our, our guide. Okay, that, that's all helpful. Last quarter, you also mentioned some insurers um, were maybe not all the way ready for cloud and highlighted a few self-managed deals. This quarter, the tone suggests things are maybe troughing. Are, so are, are you still seeing that, that self-managed dynamic as well, or did something there also maybe change as we get closer to the end of the fiscal year? Yeah, we definitely saw a, a difference between the results in Q2 and Q3, but I think that, um, you know, that has to do some, I think, always with just a couple deals can change those percentages pretty significantly. Um, in general, certainly uh, the, the majority of the bookings activity is cloud, and that is what we're leading with. Um, but we do see it uh, from time to time, and, and in specific geos, sometimes there's a, um, you know, a, uh, you know, a circumstance like we highlighted last quarter where it makes more sense to start on-prem. Um, but, like, but I want to reiterate, just like we, we said the last quarter on the call, every single time one of those situations occurs, uh, we're very, very clear about the, and the ultimate outcome of the implementation uh, you know, will be Guidewire Cloud. Uh, and the architecture of the service and the way we're approaching it uh, supports that and I think is a bit to our benefit uh, for, a, for a lot of customers. But the vast majority of bookings activity is cloud. Um, and so, you know, quarter to quarter, that, that percentage may go up and down, but the trend is certainly much more towards cloud. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Bob Ansuri with William Blair. Please proceed with your question. Hey, guys. This is uh, Dylan on for Bavon tonight. I uh, appreciate you taking the questions here. Um, maybe first for, for Mike starting out. So we had the, the Connections Conference um, uh, a, a week or so ago, and it really seemed like there was much more of kind of the cloud emphasis and readiness. Here you've talked historically about having three releases under your belt um, to where you'll feel uh, really comfortable with the kind of underlying infrastructure there. Um, we're now at that point. I guess can you just kind of talk about some of the key takeaways and learnings over the past 18 months here um, and how you're kind of viewing uh, or giving kind of customers confidence that the time is now? Yeah, I appreciate the question and appreciate that you watched that event. Um, you, you know, it, it is a, when we started the journey uh, with Guidewire Cloud, we really felt like three releases was what we were going to need in order to be able to really feel confident that we. Um, you know, that we, that we had it and that we would have enough experience with the existing customers to be able to, to know and hone our direction and the emphasis on where we've been uh, putting our effort and putting our innovation. Um, also, like, very big progress on integration and, and the data platform that I highlighted, uh, which traditionally are just very important, you know, sort of steps in any implementation. Uh, but I think the most important thing is, a bit of something that I've learned in, in almost two years here at Guidewire, which is that you have to be thinking about the future, right? Because for a, from, an, from a carrier perspective, making a decision, from an insurance company uh, perspective, making a decision about this, these projects can take nine to 12, maybe even 15, 18 months to execute. And so the, the, the mindset that I'm trying to instantiate with our customer base is that you don't just need to be thinking about where Guidewire Cloud is right now, but you also need to be thinking about where we're going to be in 18 months, because that is going to be, we're going to be evolving as the project evolves and as the project go, goes live. And so the, the confidence that we're building internally about our ability to execute and support these complex um, implementations uh, is really now there. And we really need to earn that trust and project that confidence in order to get the customers to feel comfortable making that decision. And so, you know, that was, the, that was why we were so excited about Cortina, is that you really see it all coming together. And at the same time, you can say, oh, wait a minute, 
What's it going to look like in 18 months? And that's the picture that we need to be painting with our customers because that's the platform that they're going to eventually be going live on, even if they make the decision right now. Uh, so, you know, hopefully that's helpful. Uh, but it, it, it definitely was an exciting release for us, and it was an exciting uh, connections event. Yeah, no, that um, I appreciate the color. There. That's helpful. And I guess maybe just kind of piggybacking off of that as well, um, you, you kind of emphasize the cloud readiness and, and these releases lining up with um, the legacy version end of life. I think it's almost kind of half of your base um, here facing end of life in the next year. You've got your Cloud Direct um, program. I think you highlighted a customer um, transitioning direct from version 8 to the cloud um, in the quarter here. But would love to kind of yeah, get a sense of how you guys are viewing this dynamic um, and how these conversations are trending and that, how that's giving you maybe confidence in, in not only maybe the back half of this year, but as that initial kind of fiscal 22 um, guide that you guys have laid out there. Thank you. Sure, thanks for the question. Yeah, can, you can probably imagine that sort of behind the scenes at Guidewire, we're working with every single one of these customers about their plans for their upgrades and the um, versions and supported versions and the circumstances around which they're operating and working with them uh, to make the, make the best possible choice for their company around timing and that eventual upgrade. I mean, like there's no, that's, that's one of the nice things about the circumstance that we're operating in is that there's this sort of built-in uh, upgrade cycle based on the versions uh, that all of these customers are on. And uh, all these efforts that we've made around, um, you know, proving out and simplifying that upgrade path, you know, Cloud Direct, uh, like we called out with one of the deals in the, in the quarter, has been a, a, a real benefit for us. And just being able to execute these, getting more and more experience with the projects. All of that serves to build our, build our customers' confidence and trust in, in, in us uh, and the, you know, sort of, I guess, the logical and eventual decision um, to move. Um, I, I, I just find it to be, it's, it's very unique in my personal career how often I'm having a conversation with a customer that, that we're, we're at, you know, at some point in the conversation, we, we, they say to me, it's really just a matter of when we will do this, not if we will do this. Um, and that, that feeling across, you know, 300 some customers and over 400 instances of Guidewire factors into the very complex project plan that enables us to make a projection about, um, you know, the components of those deals and how that will roll into ARR and what that will mean for uh, you know, the, the sort of finances of Guidewire. But underlying all of that, you know, I, I really think it's been, it's been very, very helpful that underlying all of that has been this attitude that we're going to build a cloud platform that works for our customers. And that, and that, you know, understanding what they need, understanding what's going to build their trust and confidence in us, and proving that out and executing on that is, is you know, sort of the basis uh, for us being able to confident to have the confidence to make the projection for next year, um, it all just it all it just feels like we set out the plan, we're executing the plan. It feels it feels good, um, you know. If the, that being said, uh, these are very very complicated projects, and there's a lot of moving parts, and and they're sometimes slow moving. And so you know this this transformation is going to carry out over years. Uh, but but my take is especially after that Cortina release. You know, is that you know it's 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 happening according to plan, uh, and we feel good about it. So hopefully, that's a long answer. Hopefully, it helps you give you some color as to what backs that up. Yeah, no, very helpful. Thank you, guys. Appreciate uh, appreciate you taking our questions. Thank you. Our next question comes from Joe Goodwin with JMP Securities. Please proceed with your question. Great. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, for taking my question. Uh, just just wanted to kind of double click on. Uh, the data studio and, and where what the early feedback has been uh, there, and then maybe you can just you know speak to you know kind of how you view the importance of data and kind of you know the the maturity of that ecosystem over time um, for Guidewire and kind of just the larger the industry um, larger. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thanks for the question. So, um, and I guess the initial feedback has been wildly positive. It's one of those product features that we've been able to work with um, a couple customers behind the scenes on. 
a couple of our cloud customers uh, have been able to have access to it, and it's been uh, received very, very positively. Um, you know, it's one of those circumstances where the product and engineering teams are sort of excited to be to be coming to work every day because of the feedback they're getting from a customer. Um, and for me, it highlighted just how different the approach will eventually be uh, with with much, much more of the Guidewire product suite where we're going to be able to work with cloud customers on early versions of these um, new products, new capabilities, almost in real time uh, in a way that we weren't really able to uh, do in the past. Uh, and that's been very um, validating uh, for me. And, you know, with respect to the importance of data and analytics, I think insurance companies are, are and always have been and always will be very data-driven. Um, it's a data-driven industry. It's an analysis-driven industry. And um, it's, it's critical not just to just support the regulations associated with operations, but to be able to make the right decisions uh, every single day about the risks you underwrite and the, the way you approach claims. It's all data-driven. And so the more fluid we can make access in that approach, the better. I'm going to – thanks for the question. <clears throat> Thank you. Our next question comes from Parker Lane with Stiefel. Please proceed with your question. Uh, yeah, thank you. It's Parker on for Tom Roderick. Um, Mike, I think it was about eight months ago when you gave us the figure that 75% of the base was on um, insurance suite eight or nine. And just wondering if you can give us an update on that and, and maybe talk to, um, you know, the relevance of Cloud Direct as customers start to contemplate whether or not to upgrade to IS 10 or move over to cloud. Is that something that you're seeing um, really resonate right now, or do you think there's still some room to go for customers to really uh, see the value there? Well, I think the answer to the question is both. Uh, it does really resonate, uh, but there is still uh, work to do. Um, like I keep, you know, this is, this is a very, very complicated decision um, for our customers. And as I've said on other calls and in other um, venues, very often that uh, decision is, ends up being related to uh, the overall IT landscape at an insurance company rather than just specifically Guidewire. Um, that there, it, it gets sort of logically lumped into an overall cloud strategy and the other uh, uh, sort of workloads or applications that a company is integrating Guidewire to. Uh, so it ends up being a very, very big decision. Certainly Cloud Direct, um, you know, our momentum on cloud, um, you know, the, the, the functionality that, you know, the beneficial functionality that's included in cloud, it sort of helps that equation um, a lot, and it, and it, like I said, resonating with customers, and that's why, you know, you hear from customers this sort of uh, when, not if uh, kind of conversation, um, you know, but it does sometimes make logical sense for a company to follow through on, uh, you know, on their existing on-prem or sort of self-managed cloud uh, implementation. And it was one of the reasons why um, I, I wanted to call out uh, this incredible go live that we saw this quarter at Insurance Australia Group. You know, this is a four-year project, a four-year modernization project. Um, you know, that's a you know, that's a it's a phenomenal partnership that we have there, and a major, major implementation that we have there. And it's very exciting for them uh, to be able to achieve that milestone. We're excited to be able to serve them effectively. Um, you know, as a as a platform provider. Um, but if you think about executing a project like that that's over four years and right in the middle of that project Guidewire introduces cloud, it just makes sense to sort of follow through, get that executed, and then once it's live and done and the, the risk of the execution there is, is gone, then you say to yourself, okay, what do I do next? And some form of that is taking place at every single one of our customers and we kind of have to work ourselves into that uh, project plan, into that enterprise architecture and into uh, a situation with them that makes sense. Uh, and so Cloud Direct helps, uh, you know, the, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the current um, upgrade cycle associated with whatever version they're on that helps, um, you know, but, it, but it's, uh, it, it's not necessarily a, there's no magic silver bullet there. It's just a big, hard, complicated project that, uh, you know, that we're frankly lucky to have an opportunity to participate in. 
Yeah, makes sense. And then maybe a point of clarity on the new usage base insurance solution. Um, as we think about the target buyer there, is it typically um, a customer that would have adopted insurance now uh, for a new line of business? Is it going to be more uh, a situation where a customer maybe has Guidewire already um, deployed and they, they choose to move over to usage-based insurance? Uh, could just give a, a little bit better sense of who the target customer is there. The, 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 the target customer is an insurance suite customer um, in general, and ideally an insurance suite customer uh, running Guidewire Cloud. And I think that the, the mindset that caused us to make this investment uh, was simply that we, I think we saw this moving away from some sort of test and learn or experimental line that each one of our customers might be thinking about and something that was becoming much, much more mainstream. And what we wanted to do is show everybody and, and, and kind of put together that complete solution that said, here's the template for how everyone could implement a usage-based insurance line uh, on uh, Insurance Suite and Guidewire Cloud. And, you know, sort of just say, like, this is going to become a percentage of everyone's um, auto insurance, uh, approach to auto insurance, and there's going to be some percentage of that, that book of business uh, that runs this way, and we want to facilitate that. And, and it's, been, it's been really interesting, right, because, you know, you're able to leverage the new functionality on Guidewire Cloud. We're able to leverage the marketplace solution uh, that are available there and put that together and provide this template um, that has been, uh, you know, that's, we've, we've received a lot of positive interest um, in understanding how that might be deployed. Got it. Thanks for the clarity and thanks for taking the question. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Joe Ruhrink with Robert W. Baird & Company. Please proceed with your question. Uh, great. Hi, everyone. Um, I want to go back, Mike. You, you mentioned a few questions ago, just, you know, built-in upgrades and having this visibility on, on migrations. And, Jeff, in your uh, discussion on ARR for next year, you mentioned buying signs from existing customers. So can you just elaborate on some of, you know, what these buying signs uh, are that you're seeing? And then, you know, just thinking about the catalyst for migration, and I, I know we've been talking about a lot so far on the call, but when you think about the dynamics in the installed base, you know, it's that ISA cohort that seems to have, you know, pretty compelling uh, events about to take place in, in 2022, just, you know, the, some of the end-of-life support on, on the underlying technology there. So, you know, is that maybe an example of kind of an event where you think over the next 12 months, you know, a, a high probability and a large share of a certain segment of your install base is going to be making a decision one way or the other? Um, I, I think I would, I would characterize it as much more that a large percentage of our customer base has to have the conversation and has to make the plan. Whether or not that, ends in, that results in a decision uh, to move to Guidewire Cloud or it ends in a, in, results in a decision to wait uh, another period of time and, you know, deal with the risks associated with the versions and the supported, you know, sort of circumstances of the environment for a period of time is TBD. Um, but for, for certainly that cycle creates the opportunity for us to have the discussion to, to work out the plan, um, which rolls up to uh, the, the sort of economics that, that we described before that result in our ability to project. Uh, but there's not, you know, that, that like I said, that, that ends up being still a very, very complicated decision uh, for each one of our customers and not as simple as just simply what's even what's for the what's in the best what's the best outcome just specifically for guidewire you know even if the outcome is just what's specifically best in the guidewire circumstance there is a conversation about what's the overall cloud strategy and what's the rest of that enterprise architecture look like and so um, it doesn't it doesn't really create you know this magic silver bullet it just creates a built-in mechanism for us to go have uh, strategic conversations with every single one of our customers about what their plans are 
and how do we facilitate and, like I said, build earn, build earn the trust and confidence that it makes sense for, for them to make the decision to go to cloud. Um, but ultimately, uh, those decisions will get made based, you know, the timing of those decisions will get made based on what's in the best interest of each of those customers. Yeah, the, the only thing I would add is, is, as you know, a fairly significant amount of that opportunity sits with the Tier 1 and Tier 2 insurers for Guidewire. And, you know, one of the ways that I think about buying signs is the amount of time that those that part of the market is investing in understanding our platform, understanding the maturity of the platform, the scalability of the platform. And we're starting to see, you know, those sorts of activities, investing more time um, that I think is a positive early signal for buying. Great, that, that's really helpful. And, and then just on, um, you know, good, good uh, comments just on uh, some of the P&L items for next year, I guess how do you think about the cash conversion on some of those? Because it's a bit tricky, you know, it, it seems like some of your revenue streams, you know, like subscriptions improve, but then license is coming down, so that has a, a margin implication. I, I, I'm just wondering maybe on the rest of the yeah. P&L and then, and then cash flow for next year. Yeah, it's a, it's a good comment. I mean, a lot of the license declines that you're seeing is a fair amount of that is related to multi-year activity um, where we continue to invoice that customer. And so the cash generation will change or get better, especially in a migration context, um, will change or get better, but the revenue is impacted. So so as you kind of, as we look to next year, and we didn't provide any commentary on cash flow from operations next year, but you know, we've noted in the past that in this transitionary period, you're going to see some divergence between operating income margin and cash flow margin, where operating income margin uh, is, you know, more negatively impacted by the transition than cash flow margin, and we'll certainly give uh, more insights around that on the Q4 call. Okay, uh, great. Helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Our final question comes from Peter Heckman with DA Davidson. Please proceed with your question. Well, thanks for taking my question. Most of my questions have been answered, but I wanted to talk a little bit on a geographic standpoint and how you see demand. Do you see uh, any green shoots in Europe, particularly the UK uh, at this point? Particularly the UK, interesting. So we, we definitely are, Having you know, continue to have success worldwide um, as it relates specifically to cloud. You know, Europe we have a couple great customers and a couple great projects. Um, you know, nothing too specific to call out in the UK uh, off the top of my head. Um, but uh, one of the things that's you know I think very very positive about our approach is that the architecture supports worldwide implementation and so you know we're having conversations um, literally all over the world you know you know, we're having conversations in Japan Australia New Zealand as we talked about on this call you know uh, Italy uh, France um, you know even the, you know the, there's there's some customers in the Nordics that we're having conversations with and so I really think that there is a uh, um, you know, it's just sort of a broad worldwide demand that maps pretty well uh, to our uh, install base. Um, Got it. So hopefully okay. that makes sense. That does. That does. And just to, real quickly, just and, and has there been any change in, in your thoughts about uh, capital allocation towards m a It's been you know, three or four years since your last deal, and uh, you know, I know valuations are high, but, but how do you think about uh, uh, putting some of that capital to work on acquisitions and, 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 and whether, how do you think about it, what, consolidating deals versus deals that add some complementary uh, technologies or, or, uh, or capabilities? Well, I certainly think that as our confidence and our, um, our ability to execute and be successful on the plan that we've laid out builds, uh, I think uh, for me it becomes uh, more uh, it becomes more possible maybe is the right word that we would look to um, inorganic growth opportunities that complement our ability or, you know our ability to deliver value to that PNC uh, customer base. Um, we're always looking at the market and as you said you know it's a it's an interesting time with respect to um, valuations but 
we are always looking, and I think for me, uh, the calculation is about how confident are we in our ability to execute on the baseline opportunity that exists at Guidewire, specifically to execute on our cloud transformation, convert our customer base successfully, and deliver significantly more value to them, then use that as a mechanism to differentiate ourselves and sell more net new PNC core systems, and then use that system that we are now very confident that will exist, use that system to add uh, additional uh, functionality, whether or not that's core systems or analytic systems or data systems, to that core, um, you know, to that core sort of enterprise architecture for a PNC insurance company. I think that that possibility makes more sense. Um, and I think this quarter, execution in Q4, execution, you know, as we look into next fiscal year, our confidence, my confidence in our ability to execute is improving. Um, you know, and so, you know, I feel pretty good about that. And I think that tends towards us being, um, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't use the word aggressive, but I'd say, uh, the, you know, the, the mindset that we have about the opportunity to identify value add um, sort of companies that we could add to that mix improves. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of the question and answer session. I will now turn the call over to Mike Rosenbaum for closing remarks. Hey, thanks, everybody. I just wanted to uh, once again say uh, thanks for joining the call. Uh, it was a great quarter. We look forward to seeing you at the end of Q4. So thanks very much, and good night. This concludes today's conference, and you may disconnect your lines at this time. Thank you for your participation, and have a great evening.